So today is a really sad day. Um, I just learned this morning that one of the greatest scientists, if not the greatest scientist I've ever met, passed away yesterday. And so whilst um, just thinking about the legacy that he leaves, I just wanted to give you a few of my thoughts because lots of people are posting tributes to him and yes, he deserves all his accolades. Um, but I think a lot of people are missing what truly made him amazing. So the person I'm discussing is Art Riggs. Um, and I know probably a lot of you are like, who the heck is Art Riggs? Um, and so uh, just a little bit about his scientific history. In the late 70s, uh, he and another amazing um, scientist, Dr. Keichi Itakura, um, were the first people to make um, recombinant um, human DNA for insulin. And so um, they were the people who made it so that patients and people who have diabetes can inject themselves with human insulin that's made in a lab and hasn't been harvested from an animal. I think previously they used to get it from either cows or pigs. Not, I can't quite remember which one. Um, but they made it so that you could physically make human insulin in a lab and, and, and inject it into diabetes um, patients. And so I want to say, and uh, I'm doing this from memory, so the dates might be a bit wonky. I want to say they published that work in either 78 or 79. And then uh, obviously everybody was super excited. They wanted them to continue making um, recombinant proteins. You know, there's, there's a ton of proteins that you could easily make in labs, um, which could help um, patients. But Art, yes, he could, he could have done that. And it was super easy money for him. But he was really excited to try and make something else, which was new, which was um, he wanted to make a humanized monoclonal antibody. And so if you're not really sure what that is, it's now one of the gold standards in cancer therapies. Um, so things like um, Herceptin, that is a humanized monoclonal antibody. And so they made the first um, humanized um, monoclonal antibody, I believe it was uh, against CCAM1 uh, because uh, he actually did that work um, in collaboration with my mentor, uh, Jack Shively. And so I think that was published in 1983. I, the, again, this is all from memory, so the, the dates might be completely wrong. But essentially, Art had the most fantastic, um, let's say a decade, uh, from mid the mid seventies to mid eighties, where he not only helped um, diabetes patients, but then he helped cancer patients too, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. Art kept making amazing discoveries in DNA um, for the rest of uh, for the rest of his career. I mean, the man is a true legend. Like you hear people talk about legends. I haven't met anyone like Art before. Like he is just phenomenal. And the one thing that sets Art apart from all the most amazing scientists out there is that he was the most humble person to go along with it. I mean, I think he was always the, the brightest person in the room, always, um, you know, the best scientist in the room. And yet he would just kind of wander into these meetings. And I do mean wander. He would meander in as if he had all the time in the world. <clears throat> he might casually wave and say hello to people. Um, and then he would just quietly sit and wait for the meeting to start. And whether that was a seminar or whether it was um, some sort of committee meeting, it was it was always the same. He just quietly came in. And, um, you know, just sat there and, you know, I've met people who are nowhere near the standard of scientist that he is. And they come in and they expect, you know, trumpets blazing, you know, I have arrived. And yet Art, I mean, he it, he was the most amazing person and he would just humbly 
walk in, didn't expect anyone to do or say things um, for him. You know, amazingly um, humble. And that's just phenomenal for me. He never, he never, um, you know, became too big for his boots. His ego wasn't there. I mean, the guy, because he had patents on these things, was rich beyond your wildest dreams and he he drove a vault and <laughs> he never moved out of the house that he had um in the 70s and he donated a huge amount of money and i mean astronomical amounts of money um back into the scientists back into his alma maters back into um education for scientists i mean he's he was amazing and he was always so generous with his time. And every year I got to see him um, during our research ethics course because I would have him come in and talk about patents because obviously he had a ton of patents. And my gosh, some of the stories to do with his patents were crazy, um, but they were true. And so, you know, I just... It would just be a joy that morning. I knew that the that the that the um, students would be tickled pink because you did not expect the story that I knew was coming, and the students kind of sat there and just kind of went, "What?" <laughs> but you know, he just you know quietly um, you know told the story about uh, it was it was the patent for humanized monoclonal antibodies, which. Um, which just made everyone laugh, but also, you know, the patent on insulin too, um, because obviously these things get challenged. And so every year I could rely on him, even though, you know, amazing scientists could, could have gone <clears throat> on the um, conference circuit and given talks all the time, but I could rely on him to come in and talk to the students um, once a year on patents. And um, I remember I gave a talk to the Summer Academy and um, I, I gave a talk and it was kind of a challenge from Dr. Roberts, who, um, Dr. Eugene Roberts, who started the Summer Academy. And he wanted me to talk about the story about how they made um, human insulin and how it had been a competition with other amazing scientists across the world and how um, they they managed to do it before everyone else. And so... I mean, I was terrified because Art and um, Keiichi Itakura, Dr. Keiichi Itakura and um, other people, uh, Louise Shively, were going to come and see this presentation. And then they were going to come and have lunch with some of the summer students. And so it was it was terrifying. I mean, showing someone else's work, talking about their work whilst they were in the room Um and I'll never forget it. I misspoke during the presentation and Art just wandered up to me at the end of the presentation and was like, you know, great job. That was fantastic. But you you do know that you said this part wrong. Um, and he wasn't mad about it. He wasn't cross. He just corrected me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry, Art. Yes, I, I didn't mean to say that. Um, and he was like, no, no, it's cool. It's cool. Just want to make sure that if you do this again you know, you, you know, and you say it, say it correctly next time. And that was just the nicest thing. And again, that's just, that was just art. You know, he needed to correct something that I, that I'd done wrong. Um, and he was just sweet about it. And then we went to have lunch with, um, the summer students and they were just in awe because for the next hour, um, art and, and, uh, Louise, who did some of the most seminal work for the insulin, um, just regaled them with funny stories about, you know, what the expectations were. Um, and I don't have it with me right now, but he generously shared um, a response. He'd asked, uh, they'd asked for money from the NIH, I believe, um, for a grant to fund this research. And they were denied because they were told that the research was kind of preposterous. There was no way it was going to work. And it was certainly not going to work in the timeline that they had suggested. <laughs> and they did it. They managed to do it. And, um, you know, I always think back about that rejection letter from the NIH, like crumbs, <laughs> that was a bad decision, NIH. Um, but they did it anyway without you. Um, so, 
yeah, art was just amazing. And I will always remember I had to, I got called to give a presentation to um, a board for my promotion to become an associate dean. And I was literally told that I had to give this presentation a few days in advance. Like it was, it was crazy. And uh, so I managed to put together the presentation, but then my mentors weren't available to do a run through. And so Jack asked his chum, Art, if he could possibly sit with me and um, I could go over my presentation with him. And he, he said yes. And so the morning before my presentation, I found myself in Art's office giving him my presentation and he, he helped me with some of the wording and he pointed a few things out to me that I'd never thought of. And at the end of it, he said, um, you know, good luck. I'm, I'm sure you're gonna be fantastic at this. Um, you know, you, you can do this. And then later on in the afternoon, I wandered in, um, you know, massive boardroom, all of these, um, you know, professors all around the table. There was art. <laughs> he was, he was on the, on this, uh, on the board. Um, and the nicest thing about art was he always looked happy. I don't know <laughs> when you, when you see people and they've got that kind of resting face and it's just kind of, you know, it looks kind of sad or cross. Art just kind of sat there and with this sort of little smile on his face, like he never looked grumpy. Um, I, I, know, I always thought that he just looked like a slim Father Christmas um, because he did. You know, he's got the white hair, he had the white beard. Um, and he just sat there and as I was giving my presentation and I was super nervous and, you know, he was just nodding along and smiling at me and, you know, kind of giving me the confidence that what I was doing was okay. Um, and again, he didn't have to do that. He just generously gave me his time because at that moment I needed some kind of <laughs> support and he was there to give it to me. And, you know, who else can you say you could just walk into someone who's incredibly busy and they gave you the time to, to give you the support that you needed. So I want to just think about art and yes, he was an amazing scientist. The stuff that he did should have, as far as I was concerned, he dude could have had two Nobel Prizes, you know, for insulin and the things that he did with recombinant DNA, with Keiichi, and then with humanized monoclonal antibodies. I mean, what the hell is up with that Nobel Prize, people? You should have done it. Now it's too late because you don't give them um, once people have died. Well, you have done that once, but I very much doubt you're going to do it to art. Um, so shame on you, frankly. That, that was fantastic work that he did. But also, art the man. I mean, he's just the nicest, humblest, sweetest, kindest person. And it just showed me that, you know, you see people who are scientists and they're real assholes. And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's just them. You know, they're fantastic scientists. They've earned the right to be an asshole or whatever it is. And Art showed me that's not true. You can be the most amazing person in the room and still be the sweetest guy possible. I never heard the man say a horrible thing about anyone, even if he needed to say something, um, you know, to, to challenge you. He did it in a nice, very, very supportive way. And people can learn a lot from him. Obviously not now, but hopefully there's videos that you can see where he's talking. But really, the people who have learned from him have learned valuable lessons, not only about how to be an amazing scientist, about how to push the boundaries and do things where people don't think it's possible, but also just about how to be a genuinely nice, caring leader, because you know, he was he was the founding dean of a graduate school. He ran um, a division uh, department and then a research institute. You know, the man was a, an amazing leader and he did it all quietly and with class and decorum, something that you don't necessarily see nowadays. And so I'm so unbelievably sad that he has passed away the world has lost a true great. And I, I don't say that lightly. You see people saying it all the time. Um, you know, legend doesn't come close to what art has left the scientific world and those who've met him. And that is just 
incredibly sad, but I feel incredibly fortunate to have known him.